We're gonna do some geology today because I know you like that. And we're gonna look for a lost mine in the process because I know you like that too, and I do too. So go ahead and buckle up because it's gonna be a fun ride. Hi, sweetie pie, where are we going? Hi, sweetie. Where, where are we going? <laughs> I don't know, somewhere. <laughs> All right, we got the toy loaded up and we're headed up into those hills right there. We're gonna go over the geology and I'm gonna teach you everything I know about them. And like I said, we're looking for that lost mine. Oh wow, look at that. What the heck is this? A small water basin, yeah. What is? A small water basin. Hey, look at this. And when they poured the concrete, they made something that looks yeah. like a, a TV it's or. Like a t old TV, yeah, an old huh? TV with the antenna. See that? Yeah. That's pretty cool. And they got stones on the side. I don't see a date. That is nice. No, I don't see a date. That is pretty cool, huh? Yeah, this is for water. You can see where they had water in here. Maybe for the cattle out here. take a look at this quartz vein. Oh, 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 oh. It thought it could get away from me. See it right over there on the hill? Huh? Can you see that right there on the hill? Ooh, look at all this beautiful geology out here, huh? Look at it all. Ooh, I see granitic rock. I see quartz monzonite. I see all different types of schist and nice. That's nice. <laughs> see the biotite mica in there? Ooh, lots of nice, a lot of granitic rock in here. Okay. Oh, there's a butterfly. Those are good luck. There it is, look at that, see it? I bet you see it now, huh? I saw it a mile away. I saw it a mile away, look at that. Huge quartz vein. Isn't that pretty? It's gotta be what, maybe, I don't know, 10, 12 feet wide? All right, we're gonna take a closer look at it and see if there's any mineralization. I see a lot of granitic rock and I see a lot of biotite mica, schistose rock. See that? That's granitic. I see a little bit of iron staining, but I don't see anything that gets me too excited. You can see where somebody's been digging right here. I'm gonna take a, uh, uh, I mean, somebody should take a soil sample here. <laughs> oh, look at this. Little tiny baby bar oh, barrel cactus. There's another one right there. Look at that, isn't that nice? Another one right there. I see some inclusions. You see the inclusions right there? Nice. Here's the country rock. Granitic rock, granitoid nature. It's got that beautiful red staining that you always like to see. Looks like somebody stacked those up. That's always nice. That is always nice. I see a little bit of limonite. See the limonite right there? Limonite is considered a pseudomorph. It pseudomorphs after pyrite. Keep in mind that limonite is a general term, okay? But for the most part, it means iron oxide. So when pyrite oxidizes, it leaves behind iron oxides and gold, if any gold was traveling in the sulfides. And that's why it's always nice, not to be confused with the other nice, that's why it's always a good sign when you start seeing outcroppings of quartz that are iron stained or have limonite in them because that means if there were sulfides in there, the sulfur is gone. And if the sulfides carry gold, then it's just gonna be iron oxide and gold. And that's what you want, free mill gold. This is gonna be common up here. Some of these veins are 15 feet thick. All right, let's keep looking around because this is some good stuff. Oh yeah, you can see the iron inclusions. I got some green epidote in there too. Here's the top of the outcropping here. And you can see 
as the vein decomposes, chunks of the quartz break off, and that's called float. That's what old timers look for when they were out prospecting the hills, they'd start in the washes because if there was any float, it would travel down in the washes. And then they just need to determine where it's coming from off the hillside. But that's what you look for. This is what's referred to as bull quartz. There's no mineralization in it. It's all been leached out. Now, I'm not saying that there's not values in here, but you'd have to dig down to find out. And that requires a tremendous amount of work. So easiest way to do that is just to drill it and see if there's anything in it. Now you can take soil samples, see if any values have leached out into the surrounding soils. If you do, then you know you're on a winner. Oh, look at that. See that? We're getting closer to something. Doesn't that look pretty? See those bands of quartz running through there, the stringers? And all that beautiful red granitic rock. And look up there, this is where it came from. Look at that. Ooh, this is exactly what you wanna see when you're out prospecting. Oh my gosh. Look at that, you got epidote and peridotite all mixed in through there. Oh, that's so sweet looking. See the limonite staining in it? And that's what you're looking for when you're out prospecting. You take chip samples or grab samples, and then you take them back and you process them to see how, what your ounce per ton is. I'm gonna do videos on assaying, so keep them pants on. But let's keep look, walking up this hill. Ooh, cause I can feel it in me bones. There's something big coming. All right, speaking of nice, that is a piece of nice. See that? See all the foliations in there? And if you look closely, you can see garnet in there too. Really tiny garnet. Those are prefer blasts. And they usually grow inside of the foliations here. I don't know if you can see the garnet in there, but there's little tiny garnets, crystals growing in the foliations. And those are called prefer blasts. Now I don't expect you to remember all these names, but I'm going over it just in case. And like I said, I'll go into greater detail later, but you hear me say nice all the time, and that's what a piece of nice is. Now, the protolith, or the original rock of nice, can come from two different sources. It can either be a piece of granite that has undergone a tremendous amount of heat and pressure, or it could have been a piece of schist that would undergone a tremendous amount of heat and pressure. And yes, it's a metamorphic rock too because it hasn't experienced melting. If it experienced true melting, 100%, it would become an igneous rock again. All right, look at this. I got another outcropping right here. You see it? Inside of this granitic rock, look at that. All along here, and see all the float traveling down the hill? Isn't that beautiful? It's got an east-west strike to it. All that means is, is dip is the angle that the vein is traveling into the earth and strike is the direction along the topography of which it travels. So you can have a vein that dips at 75 degrees and has a north-south strike. It's real simple. Ooh, beautiful red soil. You see that? All around the base of that Joshua tree. Oh yeah. Beautiful time of the day. Tell you what, all these different types of yucca plants, which is the Spanish swords, of course the Joshua trees, shrub pine, pinyon pine. Oh, it's all out here. It's beautiful, isn't it? What is that? Leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you think that thing is. Oh, cause it means something. Beautiful quartz. Vein, it's brecciated, see that? And where does it go? Right there. Huge, huge vein with an east-west strike to it. You're gonna hear me say brecciated a lot. And you're gonna see that in the USGS reports a lot. All that means is that the rock has been fractured, broken up, and then re-cemented together usually with a fine grain mass. So, and a lot of times that's where, if you're in the right district, you'll find gold is in that fine grain mass that's cementing the broken or brecciated rock. 
So don't let that scare you when you see that in a USGS report. But I'm gonna run up there and see what's up there. Wow. See the outcropping up there? There's a pole, somebody put a pole in there, probably has a marker. And there's float going all the way down the hill. See it? Wow. Look at this. It's huge. Big old huge outcropping. Look at this. Somebody cut into it. I'm trying to see if there's any gold in there. Oh, look at this. Somebody's been working down here. Look at that. Let's go down and take a look. Oh, there's a steel door. You see it? It says Cliff Patron. Cliff Patron? Let's go take a look. Look at this. They even put a steel door on it to keep people out. Look at that. Got a little vent tube on it. They got it all concreted up. Oh, yeah. Look at that. They've been working the heck out of that. See, they went down. And then they got a... Looks like they had a little bit of a... Stoked out area, but it doesn't look like it goes any further than that. Look at that. That's what I saw in the back. Cliff Patron. Cliff Patron, whatever that means. There's a vent tube on it. Somebody ripped this door clean off. Look at that. It's nice and warm in there, though. Look at that. Look at that. So yeah, they're definitely getting up underneath this thing. Remember I told you, you got to get up underneath that leached outcrop to find out if there's any values in there, and that's what they did. Oh, told you there was something big up here. I could feel it in my bones. All right, we got more geology to teach before the sun goes down. I know, I know. I wish I had a flashlight, but I don't. I don't even have my phone with me. All right, you see this? You see this? Can anybody tell me what that is? It looks like a rock inside of a rock. Now... What would this be called? Now, I've told you this in the past, but I want you to learn it. This is referred to as a xenolith, and I'll break it down so you can easily remember it. Xena, meaning foreign, and lith, meaning rock. So when this huge piece of rock, which is not really that big when it's inside a pluton, when this was actual magma cooling, and the magma chamber was forcing its way up, it broke off and sheared pieces of country rock. And that's what this is, and it got lodged into the melt and so as this cooled, this cooled inside of it like chocolate chips inside of a chocolate chip cookie great analogy that's what these are they're called xenoliths when you see them and you want to know how did that rock get inside of this rock now you know now while i'm on the subject of magma chambers real quick magma chambers can change their composition by three things they can change it by what i just showed you which is basically as it comes up and it gets other pieces of wall rock and country rock mixed into it the other one is bowen's reaction series go ahead and look that up i'm not going to get into it right now and the third one is when multiple plutons mix together so those are the three ways that a pluton can change its composition and that's very very important because later Later on, that's going to come into play as we're out looking for gold. So you have this huge piece of quartz monzonite, which is in the granite family. You can see, look at this, two different types of xenoliths inside the mix. That looks like a really good chocolate chip in a chocolate chip cookie. But when you see these, I want you to understand what it means, okay? I wonder if there's any cans down in there. That's where they usually put them is down there. I don't see anything. Oh, look, little walnuts everywhere. Now that's cool. Do you see this? You've got granitic rock here, and then you have this, what's called migmatite, right here, where it undergone melting, compression and melting. Now, this is a good example right here of when nice starts to undergo pressure and temperature changes. It starts to fold, it can be folded repeatedly, 
And when that happens, it goes through a, a partial melt, not a full melt. And when that occurs, you get all this weird twisting and banding, and that's called migmatite. So if you guys see this out in the field, that's what that is. I thought you guys would get a kick out of it. Here's some more examples right here. Look at this. See this? Classic. Classic migmatite. So whenever you see all these different folds in nice, that's called migmatite. I don't know if you can see this. Look at this. I'm walking up this wash. And do you see anything unusual right here? Right where my finger is. You see that? Look at this. What do you see? Just gobs and gobs of black sand right there. Tons of it. Look at that. Now, look at this distinction. There's a distinction zone right here where you have this coming in from this side tributary right here. See that? Flows in here, feeds out. But nothing over here. This means that there's a tremendous amount of iron coming from up there. You see that? And this is what you should be looking for too if you're out prospecting, especially some of these side tributaries that are feeding into a main creek or stream or wash. Because a lot of times the gold might be coming in from somewhere high up on the mountain and then feeding in from the side tributary. So look for these distinctions of black sand, especially out here in, in the desert. It'll be a, a no brainer. And what you're gonna wanna do is as you're going up, you're gonna sample. You gotta be a detective on this. What you wanna do is, is when you're sampling, you wanna dig out the bedrock. Don't mess with the flow sand, the loose stuff. There ain't gonna be nothing in there except very fine, fine flood gold. Focus your attention on the bedrock. Clean out to the very deepest cracks and note how much gold you're getting and then move up further. You see this? You know what that is? It's falling apart. It's decomposing biotite schist. When schist has a dominant mineral in it, that mineral's name will stand in front of the word. This is schist, it's got a lot of biotite in it, so we call it biotite schist. And biotite is a type of mica. Waterfalls are perfect catches for gold because the gold gets to the bottom down here and it can't get out. Especially if there's a huge collection of rocks. The rocks will act as a, a water dampener and it'll keep the gold down below. Now, a lot of you out there don't know this, but it's my dad's birthday today and his favorite color is yellow. So I figured what a good way to celebrate Pop's birthday than to have lunch out here in a place that we used to come all the time. I want you guys to get your, your drink ready because we're gonna give a big Cowboy Yeehaw shout out salute to my pops. So here's to you pops on your birthday. You're the greatest father a son could ever have. And I love you with all my heart and soul. And one day we'll meet again. I love you, amen. All right, what you eating there, sweetie? What is that? Uh, carnitas. Carnitas? Looks like yeah. a torta. Yeah, <laughs> a torta de carnitas. And we got chips out here. And I'm having a torta with uh, egg, that scrambled egg in there. And, uh, oh, I should have told him no guac. And beans and cheese. And of course I got lettuce and tomato in, in the cooler. And of course chips. And of course one of my favorites is double chocolate. Oh, I love this stuff. All right, what is that rock? I know. You said, Jeff, no more geology. Just to answer the question, it's a piece of diorite. Cha, cha, cha. Anyway, we're gonna have lunch in honor of my pops. If you like the video, smash that like button, smash it hard. And of course, leave us comments because we like to hear from you guys. And we got more geology vids coming for you. So until next time, this is Jeff Williams and who? Lila. And my pops saying, you like these exploration videos? Well, we do too. Stick around because we got more just for you. Take care, everybody. It's missing something. Oh, I know, cowboy style. <laughs>